Welcome back, grappling fans. My name's John Evans, and thanks for joining me again today for another Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament match. Today's match is going to be another one from the 2014 World Jiu-Jitsu Championship. This one is going to be at the brown belt level, so sit tight, and we will get right to that one. Uh, also, we have not been putting out videos lately. I'm sure as you've noticed, I apologize for that. Had some crazy stuff going on in my life, but everything is back to normal, so we should be back on track starting with this video. Yes, the future is now here at BGJ Breakdown. No idea what that means. But uh, also, on a, a semi-related note, if you haven't seen this, go check it out. It's a video panel that the Verbal Tap podcast guys put on. My friend Raf Esparza and my friend... Kevin Phillips uh, threw this thing together and we did a nice little recap on the World Jiu-Jitsu Championship for 2014 as well as the Dream Brown Belt Tournament and I think also the EBI, the Eddie Bravi Eddie Bravo Invitational. So uh, those types of things typically I'm like, eh, I could take it or leave it. But this one, maybe I'm biased. I thought it was a lot of fun. I even enjoyed listening to it back. And normally, it's hard to listen to yourself after you put out something like that. So I thought it was pretty good. But uh, yeah, so check it out. That's my sales pitch. Um, not really making any money off of it, any of that. So still sales pitch, though. Go check it out and let me know what you think. And also, if you don't subscribe to the Verbal Tap podcast, please do so. I will have a link to their podcast in the section below. It's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek MMA podcast, but they have like a lot of fantastic guests on there, uh, pro MMA fighters, pro BJJ fighters, so check that out as well, and those guys are pretty darned funny, if I do say so myself. I will watch the language from here on out, because that was uncalled for, but let's go ahead and cut on over to the match for today. This one, like I said, in the brown belt division, oh, and look who we have here, another Mike Liera video so uh that makes two for him at the worlds very popular by me i guess uh we have his opponent is going to be james smith so a very memorable name much like my own and mike lear is going to pull right into this daily heva guard and james is really doing a good job of trying to dominate this outside leg which is Always a good idea. I wish he was trying to turn his right knee out a little bit more, but Mike has a very deep hook on it and tries to extend his left leg all the way through to block James James's far leg and then hopefully take the back, but James having very good balance, able to sit his hip down and pop right back up so as not to get barambolo'd or any shenanigans like that. But now Mike is turning his guard into this collar sleeve grip, and he had the De La Hiva as well, which can be very, very dangerous if, you, if you're if you the passer, because they will yank down on this collar sleeve and usually shoot Omoplata, and I think that's exactly what's happening. Yes, he did shoot the Omoplata. James Smith, he knew he was in trouble, so he's backstepped, and Mike Liera took that opportunity to pull James into his close guard which uh, you don't see a lot of close guard these days. It's definitely not the popular kid on the block. But I will say Michael Liera is very popular in jiu-jitsu, and for good reason. He's excellent. And he has been using a lot of close guard lately, so that should tell you something. Uh, some of those old-school moves, old-school, that maybe are just not too much in favor, they're not too flashy, they are still fantastic moves. Just because they're not popular does not mean that they don't work. And especially in jiu-jitsu, you will notice things will come in waves uh, of popularity. So uh, Mike Liera trying to bring back the close guard. And he's using this technique a lot. You can see he's trying to do it here. But James is hip to his shenanigans. He is uh, trying to stop this because, oh, nice, nice waiter sweep attempt there. Mike Liera is, you can see he's grabbing this belt, and he is reaching all the way over, trying to get to his side, but James still has this elbow on the hip, and that's preventing it. What Mike is trying to do is he's trying to grab the sleeve of James and sleeve drag him off to the side. Then you stiff arm it, reach around to the back, and then come up to take the back, because with that arm dragged all the way across his body, there's not a lot he can do. Uh, to try to scramble out, especially in the gi, where you can hold that pistol grip on the sleeve and really just stiff arm him away. It nearly forces him to give his back. And Mike has been hitting that one 
on a lot of people lately. Unable to do so on James, so he must have seen what he was doing earlier. Probably, I, I'm actually really surprised that he was able to get it on many people in the worlds because anyone that saw him at the Pan Ams saw that that's exactly what he was doing to almost all of his opponents. So uh, you'd think they'd be ready for it, especially knowing that he's in their bracket. But uh, he seems to be catching everyone with it, so either he's incredibly good with it or his opponents just really didn't give it that much respect, but they definitely should have. <laughs> and James is trying to stand up to break the closed guard. One of the reasons that I like the closed guard is because even after your opponent opens up the closed guard, they still have to pass your open guard. So it's nearly like two chances to play your game. So if you have a decent closed guard, or even if you don't have a decent closed guard, you can still use that to your advantage. Try to at least put... Uh, put everything into where you can make an advantageous position. And this is very, very tricky. Mike Liera here, he's trying to go that two-on-one sleeve. If James stands up, you can see he's trying to underhook the leg for the waiter sweep. And then if he stays on his knees, he'll make this cross grab on the pant leg. And that he with that one, he's trying to hike his right leg up into the armpit, and he'll make a flower sweep. So uh, pretty much has an answer for anything that James does. James is finally able to stand all the way up and then tries to sit right back down with this underhook for the waiter sweep. James is forced to go back to his knees to stop from being swept. Uh, one of the bummers about being swept by the, the, uh, by the waiter sweep is that they sweep you and go right into mount. Oh, and this is terrible for James because uh, Mike Liera was... Now switching his grip to the left sleeve of James, and James was not ready for it. He does not have his elbow on the hip, and it looks like Mike is indeed going to be able to get this sleeve drag and come up to the back. It's only a matter of time now because he's stiff-arming James's left arm away, and yes, he does come all the way up to the back. Oh, man, beautiful stuff. So I don't think that I've seen a match with Mike Liera at the Pan Ams or the Worlds where he didn't get this sweep to go. And it's interesting, too, because he's able to... He, he clearly likes to try it on one side, but uh, he's still able to do it on the other side. Even if he can't get that first side going. And there you see he gets two points for the sweep because it went from bottom to top. He does not have the second hook in yet, as you can see there. Uh, except for this ref is definitely not wanting us to see what action is happening. But... As soon as he gets that second hook in, then he will be awarded four points for taking the back. I really kind of don't like that rule just because a body triangle or a belt line hook with a leg monitor can be just as good or better than two hooks for the back control. But there he finally gets it. So four points for Michael Liera, and now it looks like he's going to sit up for a bow and arrow choke, and he gets his legs over, and I believe that's exactly what's happening, and you notice he has the bow and arrow choke, and he does it with the double lapel. I actually prefer that. I think it's a tighter way to do it. Usually, you only grab the leg if you don't have a, a really tight grip with the double lapel. Somebody was cheersing the camera there in the foreground, and that's going to be it. So, Michael Liera... That's pretty clean. I mean, uh, James was putting up a good fight. He was thwarting a lot of what uh, Liera was doing early on. But then finally, when Liera switched to the other sleeve, he was still able to sleeve drag him, take the back exactly the way he's been doing. Yes, nicely done. Good job, Mike Liera. Get that sleeve drag, get to the back, get his double collar choke, and then move off to the side, get his legs over the shoulder, and uh, finish that bow and arrow double sleeve choke so awesome stuff from him always very exciting thank you guys for tuning in my name's john evans i've been your host and we will be bringing you many more videos very soon so sit tight thanks a lot guys i appreciate it until next time goodbye